In this video, I will overview hors d'oeuvres and canapes. The difference between hors d'oeuvres and appetizers. Hors d'oeuvres are bite-sized little morsels of food, usually one to two bites. They're served before a meal, either at a reception or some event leading up to, again, a meal or something that just stands on its own. They can be elegantly passed, butlered around, or elegantly displayed, and I'll show you some of those in a minute. Really, hors d'oeuvres are meant to stimulate the appetite. Heavy hors d'oeuvres, while could make a meal, the hors d'oeuvres itself are meant to really just get your appetite going. Technically, they mean outside the work, so it's outside the main event, outside the main function, the main meal. Appetizers, then, differ in that they're actually the first course of a meal. They're usually a little larger. They still could be a few bites, but they generally will be more than two bites versus an hors d'oeuvre being only one to two bites. It's usually served, again, with a dinner as the first course. In regards to preparing hors d'oeuvres, there are four main guidelines that you should follow. Again, they should be small, only one to two bites. You'll notice some hors d'oeuvres that do get passed around or are developed are larger than that. But classically, they should stay one to two bites. They should be flavorful and well-seasoned, but not overpowering. Recently, there's been many TV shows, competitions to where, like a taste, only one taste is, is tried and judged for that competition. That's exactly what an hors d'oeuvre should be, one bite of wow in your mouth. They should be visually attractive. Remember, we eat with our eyes. So if they don't look good, you're not anxious to dive in. And they should complement the foods to follow. They shouldn't be using the same ingredients. You don't want to have a bunch of spinach hors d'oeuvres and then have a meal following it where the center ingredient is spinach as well. We will first look at cold hors d'oeuvres and end this video with hot hors d'oeuvres. There are five main types of cold hors d'oeuvres for us to touch on. Canapes, crudités, dips, caviar, and sushi and sashimi. Let's start with canapes. Canapes are tiny, open-faced sandwiches. Again, one to two bites. You'll notice at the top here, these are tiny little pieces of toast. They are sold in a package for about $4 for about 20 little tiny pieces of already pre-toasted toast bites. You can see they have some type of spread underneath the shrimp, and then the shrimp is the body, with a dill sprig coming out as well as some caviar on top as a garnish. There are three main components to every canapé, but truly four when you think of it in classical terms. The three main components would be your base spread and garnish. In classical terms, you would have a base, a spread, a body, and a garnish. So let's take this shrimp canapé up top. You have the toast point as your base. You have this spread here, which adds flavor as well as really protects the moisture from getting into the toast point and making that soggy. You have the shrimp as the main component here, and then the garnish would be your caviar and your dill. Again, whatever your base would be, you want to make sure that it will support your overall canapé. Most times, hors d'oeuvres are going to be eaten as finger food, so you want to make sure you're not picking up that piece of, of toast and it crumbling and falling right apart. That spread, again, is a moisture protector, but will add the flavor and typically is going to be piped on to give it a, a better texture as well as to give a little height to your canapé. The garnish then can be simple, but remember all garnishes should have a point. They should tie in and really enhance the dish both visually as well as in flavor. There are a few specific terms here when you're talking about bases. You have barquettes, which are boat-shaped pastry shells, tartlets, which are round, and a profiterole re refers to some type of ball-shaped canapé. Down here is another example. You can see it, it looks like wheat bread that has just been pressed into rounds, hopefully slightly toasted to hold up to the, it looks like some sort of herb butter underneath, and then you have the salami rolled around in a cornucopia style, with again some type of spread inside and it looks like a carrot julienne sprig as well as a, a piece of flat leaf lettuce. So again that all tying together with all of the flavors. Here are some different presentations for us to look at. Not only are we looking at each individual canopy but also looking at how you would arrange these on a platter. Notice on the top right here 
It is a round platter and they have more of a triangular design grouping these canapes together. You can notice there are some hard boiled eggs as a base. There is bread as a base, but also some are on skewers and don't have any bases to them. The base is more a component of the actual hors d'oeuvre or canapé. Here you can see on this bottom platter, they're arranged in straight rows. That way you can see the difference between each of them, um, as well as down here on the bottom. Some of these, again, it looks like are completely different, but it'll go from a, a beef product to smoked salmon, to which looks like turkey or ham. Um, and then it continues on here with different varieties. You'll notice the bases are all different as well. This is more an example of a tea sandwich, an open-faced tea sandwich, but still an example of a canapé. Here they have the smoked salmon on the flower-looking pieces, as well as thinly sliced cucumber or zucchini that are on your triangle points. A really popular kid's canapé would be ants on a log a celery stick with peanut butter and raisins on top. This is taking it a lot, a lot more adult-like here with the prosciutto and it looks like maybe some sort of cream cheese with nuts and some other flavor components in there. That looks great. Moving on to crudité. Crudité means raw thing and it actually refers to raw or slightly blanched vegetables that are served as an hors d'oeuvre. You can display them uniquely in a Large, or a small shooter cup with them coming out and a nice hummus underneath or some type of vegetable dip underneath there. You always want to pick the best quality ingredients though and have great color contrast. When you blanch broccoli, uh, it definitely brings out that, that green color as well as you can incorporate a little salt and bring out some natural flavor as well. Uh, cauliflower is another great one that is pretty crunchy raw but slightly blanched. It will bring out that brilliant color a little bit more for you. Uh, again, they could be served with one or more dips, um, and you could do that creatively when you're arranging them on the platters. Uh, crudité platters refer to not just vegetables, but in general, your fruit and cheese as well. Here are some vegetable platters, again, to give you an idea of the display and arrangement. Notice they use different colors next to each other, so that way it can have a flow, have some contrast there. Uh, they didn't just throw these carrots on here. Instead, they, they purposely placed them. Notice with the, the zucchini or the cucumbers here, they purposely place them. Here's an example of a red cabbage hollowed out to put one of those dips inside there. We also have a couple of fruit platters here to show you. It's generally going to be a focus point. So here you can see they're using the pineapple hollowed out to hold those blueberries. And then here we have part of the top of the pineapple cut as a focal point, again using um, maybe the base of it then to hold those. This looks great, this platter, although I fear that once somebody starts to take any of this off, it might start to dismantle all on its own. We do have down here also a nice cheese and fruit platter on the bottom right with some nuts and dried fruits, um, as well as some crackers and your cheese nicely displayed. This could possibly be for a dinner party of six. Um, this bottom left one, you could see an apple bird in the back as a focal point. Here they have things like a blood orange cut and a crown cut. Again, it's the way that they're displaying it that I wanted you to see, uh, specifically contrasting colors to ensure that things stand out. Moving on to dips. Dips could be hot or cold. Uh, I'm going to start off talking about the cold dips, but realize this all applies to the hot as well. Different accompaniments could be bread, could be vegetables, crackers, pita toast points you you name it uh, most are gonna well i shouldn't say most some are going to be mayo based some will have a cream cheese or a sour cream base um, and some of them are purees such as a hummus is going to be a chickpea puree that has a, a tahini a sesame paste in it the service and presentation again is something to be concerned about to make sure that you can adequately serve your guests you'll notice at the top here i have a picture of a bread bowl that has a dip in it. This is, this is a great way, especially when you're serving a hot dip, for all the extra grease or oil to, to soak up into that bread and then offer that as, as an additional component of your dip to enjoy with it as well. Um, it's, it's a natural bowl. I think it works really well with the presentation as well as the inside bread that you remove. You can serve with it as an accompaniment there as well. I didn't mention chips. Obviously, tortilla chips are great with your guacamole or salsa. Here's a mango salsa pictured. Uh, at the bottom here, you can see these cups 
These are, this is, it looks like a taco salad served in individual sized portions or a taco dip. Here using a head of iceberg lettuce to then put your probably some type of bacon dip inside and then serving it which, with what looks like pumpernickel pitas here. Uh, again, you can see the different presentations, mainly when you go to garnish your dips. You're going to be working with ingredients that are already within it and pulling it out. You'll notice here with the guacamole, they have cilantro or the lime with the salsa. And I'm pulling out ingredients that would already be in it. Caviar. I'd like to move on to caviar. True caviar comes from Russia, comes from the Caspian Sea there, and it comes from the sturgeon fish specifically. You'll notice the sturgeon fish pictured here at the bottom. There are three main types of caviar. Beluga, this is the most expensive. It's the largest. It's a dark gray and the eggs are very well separated. Ocetra then is going to be your medium size. It's more of a golden yellow brown and oily. It's considered the best tasting. Again, not the most expensive, but considered the best tasting. And then you have Suruga, which is going to be your smallest caviar. Again, all three of these are the fish roe coming from the sturgeon fish, specifically in the Caspian Sea. You'll notice here at the bottom, there's American sturgeon caviar, and there's salmon caviar. All fish have roe. It's just a matter of how prized they are. You can see in this picture here, this is the salmon roe. I also have some white fish and some lump fish caviar. This black lumpfish caviar I can get for about $9 in the grocery store in the dry food section where your canned proteins would be. As far as the belugra, ocetra, saruga, you're talking $100 for an ounce and they are under lock and key and you have to specifically request them. Um, the more classical true caviar has a lot of reaction with different products so it's important that you know how to properly serve it. Before I move on to that, there is also pressed caviar, which is made from Ocetra and Suruga, and it's pressed together and more packed. It is also less expensive than your Beluga or Ocetra would be. When you are presenting your caviar, it's important to have a non-metallic bowl. The caviar will react with any stainless steel or aluminum products that you have. So a non-metallic bowl, such as a glass bowl, that's served on ice to keep it under 32 degrees. Be careful your spoon also has to be non-reactive. The common items that it is served with are bellinis. This is a picture of the bellinis, buckwheat little pancakes as your base. Or you could use buttered toast. You could have eggs then that are cooked and separated. You'll notice the, the whites as well as the yolks. We have some onions here, some chives, some capers, sour cream, you have, or creme fraiche. Lemon and radishes are all typically served with your caviar. Moving on to sushi and sashimi then. Both include raw fish, but sashimi is solely the raw fish, whereas sushi is more so the term that refers to the raw fish that's served over or on seasoned rice. There are many other terms that are included here, but we'll concentrate on just identifying some different roles, and I've included some videos for you to be able to see the beginner guide to learning about sushi. At the top left here is a hand roll of shrimp, imitation crab meat, you see some salmon it looks like with avocado and cucumber. This is your typical California roll. You have your imitation crab meat with your avocado and your cucumber. With the orange smelt eggs on top, it is now an Orange County roll. This is a common dragon roll, rainbow roll with a variety of fresh fish on top of a California roll. This is a salmon roll. Here you have a shrimp tempura roll, one of my favorites, a spicy tuna roll, a spider crab roll. You have your wasabi that's served with all of them, as well as your ginger. This is your salmon down below, as well as a Philly roll, which has the salmon and cream cheese. Ending with hot hors d'oeuvres, there is a variety, including your hot dips, as well as filling pastry shells and small skewers that are served hot or cold brochettes. There's meatballs, stuffed mushrooms, filled dough balls such as your Wellingtons, phyllo triangles such as your Spanakopita, rumaki, which are bacon wrapped water chestnuts. There's a large variety of hors d'oeuvres. Include your sanitation skills in maintaining that you are not using bare hands with finishing any of these. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thank you.